welcome to another edition of What's the Story here on The People Chronicles. My name is Joe Painter and our show today is all about new beginnings. I'd like to welcome our guest, Sia Mara. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So Sia Mara, you are in a new beginning? Yes. Um, I was like in a bad situation a couple years ago and I finally came out of that situation and I have two kids, so it's definitely a new beginning, a real new beginning, um, with three daughters. You know, raising three girls is tough. No kidding. Yeah. You talk about tough. How many of us, and I think all of us at any given point in time, have been on that road, you know? They say we're all on a journey, you're on the road, and if you find it's not working, it's never, ever, ever too late to turn around and, and pick a different road, pick a different path. Is it fair to say that you've done that? Yes. So can we rewind a little bit? Sure. What road were you on? Um, I, was, I was doing good and I thought that I wasn't doing that good now that I think about it. And you know, I just, I thought I, ha I had, I think more, I thought I had more problems that I did when I didn't. I was just uh -huh. like chasing money and I started chasing the wrong money and it put me in a bad situation. That's interesting you say that. I was just listening to a podcast this morning and it was, would you rather have more money and less time or more time and less money? And it's something that's a universal thing. We all struggle with these things. So you're at a point in your life and you're, you're scraping and you're earning money and we all get there and sometimes we spend years and years and decades there chasing that money. So, but you're saying you looked back and you, you're realizing now you didn't need to chase the money? Yeah, I mean, I would have preferred rather more money. I mean, no money and less, more time. Yeah, yeah. Because then it put me in a bad situation. You know, I ended up in prison and my mom had to take care of my daughter. Back then it was one daughter. Thank God I didn't have like a bunch of kids that she had to look after. So she had to look after one daughter and I had to look at prison walls and prison bars and prisoners and you know lifers and everything that I'm like oh my god these people are never gonna get out of here and it was it was rough are you comfortable talking a little bit about how you ended up there um I can do that yeah well I was chasing the wrong money and um, this guy that we were all working for he um, next week I'll pay you next week I'll pay you next week that oh my check didn't come yet and it just just got to the point that it just got like frustrating and I seen the other workers they were like you know trying to, they were just figuring things out of like what to do and stuff and I mean one thing led to the other and that next time he you know he got hurt real bad the last time he got hurt real bad is this the employer yes so he gets hurt bad there's an, something that happens that you are in by default because you're employed by him? Yeah, I mean, I was there and everybody decided to, you know, hurt him and stuff. And, you know, everybody, nobody wanted to like contact the police because then everybody was scared. And, um, you know, I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do now. Now I'm in a bigger mess than what I started in. Right, and right. Then I just started like regretting everything and it was already too late for that. I was already like headed to prison. How long were you in prison? Almost four years. How did you deal with that? Oh my God, it was horrible. It was tough. I couldn't. I couldn't even deal with it. I think a any of us, just the notion of, you know, you're gonna go to prison, is it's yeah, your body kind of freezes. You think, oh, no. Yeah. I couldn't, like, I couldn't, it, I would just went like, Psh. like I couldn't, it was, I was a different person. But you did I, like, serve. transformed. <laughs> Transformed how? Was it a good transformation? It was. It made me a little bit tougher. Mm -hmm. It made me realize to think, you know, before you do certain things because some things don't have the right consequences and mm -hmm. you have to be careful really what you do because you could end up in the wrong route like I did. Well, you're out of prison now. Yes. You're beautiful and a great <laughs> smile yeah. and raising three girls. So. What has transpired in prison? What What are some things that you did to number one, just hang in there and get through those four years, and number two, change 
the way you think about things, because obviously you're functioning differently now than you were prior to prison. Well, I took a lot of classes. I took like anger management classes in there. I took parenting classes because my daughter was also growing up, mm -hmm. me being in there. So, you know, I was like, what am I going to do now? She's going to want to do different things and she's not little anymore. So I took classes to help me. And I just kind of like talked to a lot of the girls in there. And everybody definitely has a story in there. And mm -hmm. I was just like, wow, this is like insane right now. Unbelievable stuff that you think wouldn't happen, it happens. So did you find that in, in prison, as you're, you're among all of, all of the other women who are in prison, everybody thought, you didn't think whatever actions were happening would land you in prison? Right, at all. If I would have been a little clearer up here, maybe I would have backed off of a working yeah. for this man and everything, and it was just a bunch of lies and jealousy, I feel like, because the people who introduced me to this man, they were doing things that, I don't know, things that I wouldn't do for money. Right. And um, I guess the man thought it was gonna happen, but that's why I feel like he kept saying next week, next week, next week, because he know he couldn't get me, but he really, at the end of the day, I did pay the final consequence. So yeah. having experienced that, what would you share with your daughter, with your younger self, or with any other young woman who could find themselves in that very same situation? What red flags would you share and say, hey, think twice about that so that somebody else doesn't end in the same? I would, um, I would just say, you know what, this is not right. If you feel like something is wrong, it definitely something is wrong, and um, talk to somebody, talk to people about what's going on, and maybe somebody else can tell you something that makes you realize that this is not right, and you know, deal with it other ways than having to just, oh, I'm gonna get him, and this is gonna happen, and you know, you, you can't do that nowadays because you can end up in jail for life, you can end up killed and stuff, and it's not worth it, it's just not. These are very serious consequences that yeah. you're talking about, and it sounds like when you were in it, you went it pretty much alone. Yes. You didn't seek help, you didn't talk to anybody, and most importantly, you didn't listen to that inner person that's saying, you know, something's not quite right here. Yes. So that's your biggest lesson that you'd like to share. Yes, it's, it's totally not worth it, you know, get out of that situation and go to plan B and you know there's always a lot of jobs out there people are willing to hire you you just got to look and you know sometimes stop trying to take the easy way out that's really really good advice now I'm curious because you are that's all behind you now oh yeah that's all behind you oh and you're on that new path yes so what are you doing now but now I work, I'm taking care of my daughters, and even though there's still like money issues still there, but I don't even try to worry about it anymore. I just say, hey, it's, it's gonna get paid someday. Good job. <laughs> That's an interesting perspective that you brought with you, rather than fretting and trying to get it easy money. Yeah. There's no such thing as easy money, really. Right. Right? So, in, in this new path, how difficult was it to find a job after you came out of prison? Um, I was a little, like, ashamed and embarrassed. And I said, who's going to hire me? I, now I have felonies, and, you know, now it's harder for me. But I feel like it's not even. i am just got to do the right thing. Now I'm doing the right thing with these felonies and everything, and I'm getting along good and better. So, um, how many times did you go to an employer and because, simply, because there was a felony, you weren't able to get that job? None yet. Oh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic news. So, that does, does that tell you that in our lives, whether or not we paid that supreme consequence that you've had to pay, we've all made poor choices. And so, second chances, third chances, fourth chances are really important. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people out there willing to hire you 
they don't care what you've been through and they don't look at none of that. They're just willing to help you out and give you a chance and start a new beginning. And the new beginning is looking very, very bright for you. Thank you. What, what are your goals in the future? Where do you want to? Where do you well, want to go or what do you want to do? Oh my God, I want to do so much stuff. It, my list is so long. It's like I have a lot of stuff <laughs> on my agenda now that I want to, and I'm looking forward to do, you know, new cars, new home, new everything. But you're living it differently now. Yeah. I'm What's just, your biggest difference? Um, I'm not really sure. I'm just taking it step by step. I have a 14-year-old now. You know, and then I have a two and a half year old and a nine month old that they remind me that I need to stay put and just take it easy and, you know, just take care of them and be normal. You are doing, you're, you're better than normal, I got to tell you. You're doing a fantastic Thank job. You. Thank you for sharing your story with us here on What's the Story? And yeah, there's yeah. always, always a new beginning. No matter where you are, what you're doing, you can survive. <laughs> There you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Want to know more about who's doing what in Berks County? Check out the stories on thepeoplechronicles.com. These stories are made possible in part by Queen City Restaurant, Greth Holmes, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, and Spring Ridge Financial.